In this video today, I'll be showing you how to completely obliterate FOMO from your trading in four simple steps. Hi, I'm Kreda. I'm a high performance psychologist and a coach to traders and online entrepreneurs. I help people to get the mental edge so that they can win bigger in business and in life. If this video is helpful to you, please like the video and share it with any other traders that might find it useful as well. What is FOMO? The fear of missing out and the bane of a lot of traders' lives. It's basically when you see an opportunity in the market and you feel a compulsive urge to follow it, even when it isn't actually part of your trading plan. And of course, the consequences of FOMO are getting into trades that don't fit your A plus setup criteria, maybe paying attention to stocks that aren't on your watch list and then trading them. Or it could even be that you've gotten out of a trade according to your rules and then you jump back in again because you fear that you're missing the move. You're getting that fear of missing out and you feel like you jumped out too early and there's more profit to be gained. But the crucial part in discerning whether it's FOMO or whether it's a genuine opportunity is by testing that opportunity against your trading rules. If your rules are telling you not to take the opportunity and you're feeling a strong urge to do so, you can be sure that that's the fear of missing out. When we want to understand how FOMO impacts our trading, we can think of it like a pathway. So there's some triggering factor that occurs, which sparks the emotion of this fear of missing out in us. And then that emotion drives us to take actions that are not actions that serve our highest good in our trading. So they reflect breaking our trading rules or maybe doing something that we hadn't planned to do, which often results in losing money, giving back profits to the market and all the things that we're trying to avoid. So when we want to actually obliterate FOMO from our trading, the first thing we have to do is understand why it's happening. So we go to that first part of the pathway and we can categorize it into three broad reasons of why FOMO would be elicited within us when we're trading. The first one is focus. The ideal focus for a high performer, whether that's an athlete, a trader, um, a fighter pilot would be the focus on the execution of the process. So you always want to be process focused as opposed to outcome or results focused. When that doesn't happen in the case of FOMO, what's happening is that your focus is getting pulled externally or drawn to the PL. So either of those things are equally as damaging to your trading account. The first one the external focus could be happening when you're paying more attention to what your friends are doing or to what other traders are doing in the chat room or on the live show, more so than your own trading plan. So it's like shiny object syndrome, you're getting distracted and then you're going down the rabbit hole of taking the trades that other traders are taking, even though it's actually not part of your plan. So we're gonna park that and we're gonna move to the other two factors that trigger FOMO. Then we're gonna resolve them with a four step process. The second triggering factor that creates FOMO in us is our expectations. So a lot of traders start out on their trading journey and they think that they're going to be consistently profitable within a year, or they're going to be replacing their salary from their really high earning uh, tech job or nine to five job in within a year and they can swap over to trading full time. And usually it's not as smooth or as short a learning curve as that. And it sometimes is that people have those expectations at a subconscious level. They're not actively saying that to themselves every day or they're not telling their friends that that's going to happen. But somewhere in them, they have decided upon that time frame as the time frame for success. And then that becomes an internal pressure and a standard that they're holding themselves against every time that they enter the market. And this can be happening at a subconscious level. So if that's the case and you have unrealistic expectations about how quickly you need to succeed or how much money is reasonable to make, you know, from the outset of your trading journey in a short space of time, you're going to be over focusing on the PL. And that's because you want to see evidence of success, which is obviously your profits increasing or you really want to make the money. So you're more attached to the actual money that's being made rather than just the notion of success and you're forcing it. So when you're forcing it, that's when you find that that FOMO occurs and you're looking for any opportunity possible to make money quickly and see results. So it's like you're grasping at all of these opportunities that might actually not be high quality opportunities, but because that urge to succeed and to make money is so strong in you, it overrides what you know you should be doing, which is just sticking to your trading plan. And then the third factor is deep subconscious programming. So I'm going to use just one program as an example to make it really simple and straightforward, but this isn't the only one that might be at play. 
But one example of a subconscious program that can really create FOMO in people is a scarcity money mindset. So when people believe at a really deep subconscious level that they never have enough money, that they have to work really hard in order to succeed, that they have to hold on to every dollar that they make because money is scarce. If that's the baseline program that they're operating on, and again, this doesn't mean that they're thinking about that consciously every day or when they're in the market, it's happening at a much deeper, like underwater level for them. If that's going on, that's also going to create an overfocus on the PL. So that urgency to make money quickly. Um, in the last example, we spoke about that coming from a sense of pressure and expectations about how quickly to succeed. In this example, that's coming from a place of feeling like you never have enough money and that you have to chase every opportunity to make money and hold on to it as tightly as possible. So that's a mindset. You could be a multimillionaire and still have a scarcity mindset and still be losing sleep every night, every time the market takes a dip and your investments drop or every time that you have a losing day and you're in the red. So recognize that a scarcity mindset and these limiting subconscious beliefs that control every aspect of our lives unconsciously, we're not always aware of them, that if that's at play for you, then it's likely going to result in the emotion of FOMO, that fear of missing out, because again, there's going to be an urgency to make money. So with those three triggers, that's focus, expectations, and subconscious programming, if we know that they are the root cause of FOMO, then we can go and address those root causes to eradicate the FOMO so that you can stick to your trading plan. Want to hear how? Stick with me. This is my four or solution to completely obliterating FOMO from your trading for good. And yes, I'm saying four or because I'm from Ireland and that's more native to me to say it like that. I do understand that most people would call it a four R solution, but we're here to improve your trading, not to argue about semantics. So let's get into it. Number one, refine your trading rules and your plan. If your rules and your plan are not detailed enough, it leaves a lot of room for subjective in the moment decision making or basically emotion based decisions. And we want to completely take that out of play in our trading as much as possible. So what I often see is that because people don't have a clearly defined enough set of rules, it makes it very easy for them to be confused about what they should be doing. They have a vague notion of where they should get in and where they should get out, but they haven't defined the criteria so much that it's completely objectively measurable as to whether they stuck to it or not. And if that's the case and it's not well defined enough, it's very easy to be swayed by what other people are doing because you're not 100% sure of what you should be doing or you're not holding yourself accountable to the execution of your plan because it's too vague. So in that situation, you're leaving yourself open to being distracted by other people or even to looking at the PL and being driven by the PL as opposed to the execution of your plan. In that situation, the PL would seem like a more concrete metric to follow because the plan isn't defined well enough. So one simple solution to FOMO can actually be to just refine your rules and your plan down to the level of detail where it's completely concretely objectively measurable as to whether you stuck to your plan or not and to the level of detail that it gives you a structure to focus on. So rather than just telling yourself, oh, I should focus on the process instead of the outcome, when you have this clear plan in front of you with all of the rules defined, that's become something much more tangible to attach your focus to. And just to give a quick example of what I mean by the level of depth that you might define that in, I'm talking about defining the hours within which you trade, the markets that you're trading. So you're only allowed to trade X amount of markets at between the hours of X and X, the amount of trades that you are allowing yourself to take in a day. Um, the exit and entry criteria for trades. So it's specifically what criteria makes an A plus setup for you? Are you allowed to trade A plus setups, A setups and B plus setups? Or are you restricting yourself to only A plus setups? In terms of your exit criteria, what constitutes getting out of the trade? What market signals will tell you that it's time to get out, assuming that it hasn't hit your profit target? Maybe you create rules specifically about parceling out of a trade. So that's a really well-defined set of rules, not just for exactly what you should be doing to manage the trade, but also the boundaries within which you should be trading. 
If you define that in great detail, you will find it so much easier to not let your focus get distracted by other people in the chat room or even by the PL because you've got something much more concrete to focus on. Number two, remove distractions. So just like the person who's on a diet who doesn't buy the biscuits in the first place because they know that if they're sitting in the cupboard, they'll be tempted by them, you can apply that same approach in trading. So you want to remove any possible distraction that could cause you to engage in FOMO or that could exacerbate your feeling of FOMO. So at a very basic level, that might look like turning off the live show, the chat room, while you're actually in your trading window where you should be actively trading. It could even look like muting your WhatsApp group with your trader friends where everyone's sharing in real time the trades that they're taking, the stocks that they're watching, um, and even the profit that they're making. By removing those temptations, you are making it 100% easier for yourself to just focus on the execution of your plan. Number three, realistic expectations. So we spoke about how a lot of traders have expectations about the rate of how quickly they should succeed, the amount of money they should be making in a certain time frame. But often these are not necessarily conscious pressures that they place on themselves. So the first thing to do is to sit down with yourself and do some journaling and reflecting on what are your expectations for you as a trader. What amounts of profit are you expecting to make this year? Is it reasonable based on where you're currently at? So often people, even when I start coaching with them, they'll set very big outcome goals for the year because they know that they're now taking action to improve their mindset and improve their trading psychology. And rightly, they assume that that will result in better discipline and consistency. But the piece that they often underestimate is the amount of time that that will take. So somebody starts working on their trading psychology and they say that, okay, I want to be making $10,000 a month uh, from next month on. But actually, when you look at where they're starting from, maybe they're currently negative $500 on average at the moment every month. So you have to look at where you're at now and then the expectations that you have for yourself for this year or for the next five years uh, based on that starting point. And then make sure that if, when you look at it in the cold, hard light of day, it's unrealistic, make sure that you tweak that to create much more realistic expectations that remove the pressure on you. And a second thing that you can do in that same vein, especially if you're someone who is trading part-time and you want to become a full-time trader and you want to quit a nine to five job, is to be very realistic about how quickly you're going to earn profits and the size of those profits so that you can actually plan a more gradual pathway of moving from being fully employed to becoming self-employed as a trader. One mistake that a lot of traders make is that they actually don't plan for that to be like a ramp. They make it more like jumping off a cliff. So they decide that when I get to X point in my trading, I'm going to quit my job and then I'm just going to put go all in on trading and that's how I'm going to make my income. And once the pressure's on, I'll have to, you know, I, like jumping off the cliff and expecting then that you'll fly because you've jumped off the cliff. I don't recommend that approach. What I would recommend is that you create a very strategic, detailed plan as to how you're going to replace your income while you make that transition. It could even mean that there's a middle period where you're working a part-time job to bring in some money to help you to focus on trading so that you're never in a position where you're heaping so much pressure on yourself to have to make money that it causes you to have an overfocus on the PL and then that triggers FOMO in your trading. So we want realistic expectations, both in terms of the time frame that you're going to succeed in and also how much money you expect to make for the next month, year, five years in your trading. Number four is reprogram your subconscious mind. So we talked about how people can have different subconscious programs at a very deep level. These are beliefs that they're holding at a deep level within their psyche, within their subconscious mind that are impacting their actions in the market. And we use the example of a scarcity money mindset. So if you were somebody who believes that they never have enough money, money is scarce, it's hard come by, it always leaves, then you will definitely want to reprogram that belief at the deepest level within you so that you can adopt a set of beliefs around money that are more conducive and more supportive to effective trading. So just to explain that with concrete examples, um, a scarcity money mindset belief might be I can never have enough money. Um, I need to hold on to every dollar I earn so that I can prevent uh, poverty. 
I, no matter how hard I work, I can never pay my bills. They're all examples of beliefs around money that reflect a scarcity money mindset. The opposite of that would be beliefs like money is attracted to me like a magnet. Every single one of my needs and desires are constantly met. Uh, the market is my ATM machine. It is delivering me money every single day. Um, no matter where I go in the world, money finds me. So you can see the difference in those statements. One set of beliefs are going to create FOMO, which is going to result in all of those actions that reflect you breaking your rules. And the other set of beliefs, the ones that you would ideally try and program, would actually create an emotion of calm and composure while you're in the market and allow you to just do what you need to do in order to make money. And the irony is, if you're focused on the process, then the profits take care of themselves. So rather than go really in depth into explaining how to reprogram your subconscious mind, I'm just going to give you a pre-made resource that can help you to do that. So I'm linking now, I never know which side this comes up on, to a YouTube resource, Money Mindset Affirmations that I created, where you can literally just plug and play. So you just listen to this recording every single day and the repetition is really important that's what creates the reprogramming and if you listen to this specific resource this is intended to create an abundance money mindset within you so if you're a trader who's struggling with FOMO and you think it's linked with an urgency to make money because you feel like you never have enough of it this is a tool that will really help you to eradicate FOMO completely from your trading so those were our four or solutions refine your plan remove distractions realistic expectations and reprogram your subconscious mind for success. I hope you liked this video. If it was helpful or if it wasn't helpful, let me know in the comments below. And if you have other trading psychology themes or topics that you'd like me to cover in another video, drop that in the comments below too. And lastly, if you're interested in learning more about how to proactively train your mind for success, so to work on your trading psychology and to gain the mental edge in your trading, then you can access my free trading psychology masterclass and I'll leave that in the description box below and also in the pinned comments and I'll hopefully see you inside that.